Like, honestly, it's like uh, the depth of the practice really shines through whenever I spend time with you, particularly in session. It's, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's humbling. It's a great pleasure, man. Yeah. I love how you receive it. Yeah. Obviously, you are very super conductive to, you know, to receiving that. Yeah. Means that your there is a part of your brain that gets out of the way and then you you yeah. open up to, to receive so yeah it's a good match yeah and to become <laughs> a tantrika you know <laughs> <laughs> full on <laughs> so uh, what we did here is of course like it's a micro practice micro experiment yeah. you know if you want to access your your dark masculine in the traditional uh, world uh, then. MMA fighting, yeah. you know, like extreme things, but also within the business world, you know, yeah. there are lots of people who are in the, uh, in in business who approach precisely in a way that is very dynamic and very powerful with yeah. lots of willpower. You have to fight a lot of energies when you look at those leaders who are creating companies and so on. They have a lot of balls, right? They have the trust. They engage into it with. Um, lots of determination and power. So the, the power to access your dark masculine doesn't have to be mystical. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in my case, that's, that's what I love because it gives um, a, a dimension of, uh, of power and beauty and bliss. And what we just activated when we say Kalakula, Trishulaya, Kalakula Jaya is just one of the pillars. Mm. You have probably like 100 different pillars. You have all the tools over here. Yeah, you have uh, precisely that's the Vajra. So this is. This is the power of change, transformation, destruction. This is the power of creation. And then we have another one over there, which is the power of protection. And so what tends to happen with this, it is that we are uh, now activating those, those superpowers, how to be alive. And it's not just us in isolation in our own personality. It's really with connection to forces that are sponsoring our evolution. Absolutely everything that is happening on this planet is spiritual, mm -hmm. everything has a dimension of, of magic and, and divinity to it. But some things are more intentional geared towards communicating with, with the sources. So if you look at, uh, again, you know, the, uh, the model of, w this is like a model of our consciousness, right? Or a model of your life, uh, the physical body with the subtle energy layers as well, then the astral, which is the emotional and feeling uh, area and then the mental body with rational thinking and intuitive uh, abilities. And so the animals evolve up to here. Mm -hmm. They don't have a mental body mm -hmm. or very, very little developed. And we have, we have all of that. So this is our egoic vehicle of personality. And the ego is both good and bad. It's like there are aspects of the ego that are uh, immature and aspects which are mature. But then when we tap into the source codes, and this is like using mantras, we are uh, starting to tap into the, the programming of, uh, of our minds. Yep. And I believe that the moment you activate this in your life, uh, then your, your power foundation starts shifting mm. because then you are constantly sending this prayer out. So a very simple way to activate that in your field is to sing this mantra five minutes every morning. Mm. I will send you uh, some videos about it and then you can activate that and that because you have to build up that muscle. Yep. Like right now, you're just shown the pathway, but then it's time for you to, to build it up by yourself or come here as with a tribe and every week we practice, right? It's spiritual weightlifting in that sense. Yes, yes, exactly. It's how to, to become a, a ninja. And again, when, uh, you know, when I see um, when I was looking at you doing the practice, what was coming through was your inner child was very present. Mm. It's like there is a part of you which becomes really happy because you feel that the, the safety is coming back. The safety that you might not have had, I don't know, in traditional life, maybe family or where, whatever was going on in your, in your personal life. And so the fact that you go like, okay, wow, there is something that is unbreakable, mm. that is really solid, that cannot be taken away from mm. me, which is like, the dimension that you have or the connection that you have with source, mm. that's unbreakable. Mm. Unless you want to, to remove it out of your field, which, going, which is going, still going, going to be very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but basically there are forces or sources of love and power that cannot be taken away from you. You are alive, right? Even if you go on a deserted island right now and you disappear out of the world and you are uh, drifting on a, on a little raft and you just arrive on this beach and then you are there for the rest of your life, you are still going to be alive. There might not be other people around, there might not be civilization, but you're still alive. So your life force is your 
greatest point of safety. Mm. It's not your bank account that mm. can be taken away, your girlfriend, all your friends, absolutely everything that you know on the physical level can be taken away from you. Your watch, the things that you're attached to, that's not your safety. Your safety net, <laughs> your safety net is uh, your connection to spirit, the connection to source, the mm. connection with your life force. So as long as you keep, con keep on coming to that, mm. then everything becomes an extra. Mm. A roof on your head, water, food, money, all that is an extra thing mm. that is given to you. It's all a gift. It's funny, I felt safe as soon as I picked this up. Yeah. It was almost like it was safe to navigate the darkness with it. Yeah. Exactly. So if you... Um, it's safe if you to hold the darkness with it. Yeah. yeah. If you engage uh, on in the jungle over here and you have a, a motorbike, you know, all terrain, uh, that's going to give you a sense of safety. You move really fast if you have to walk. And so now we are developing a vehicle, precisely a kind of spaceship, energetic, energetic, uh, uh, energetic vehicle that is going to give you that. Mm -hmm. And now, not just for us, but you and I, we are riding in a Hummer now. We have a four-wheel drive. We have like this fully equipped uh, system. And within that, you have the power of destruction and you have the power of creation, right? And we have about 100 other powers within that. The power of truth, the power of ease and flow, the power of body mastery, sexual mastery, coupling mastery. So all of those are different words that we can start activating step by step. Mm. All right? Mm. We, are, we are not going to go there, but basically you see, you see what the, the picture, right? Yep. So right now, the dark masculine inside of you is being activated, and your inner child feels really happy. Mm. You feel like, oh, I feel, I feel loved now. I feel like uh, really contained. And what's going to happen is that now when you have the, the dark masculine activated and you have a, the, the f light feminine in the form of a partner coming and she's vulnerable, then you can be like, it's okay, baby, I got you. You're <laughs> safe with me. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to step out of this relationship unless it comes to an end whenever. But I'm right here. I'm right here. So you can really discover how to hold space mm. or not. And uh, in the beginning, when you start practicing, precisely being in your powerful darkness, uh, it can feel a bit uh, unstable. It's like you, you discover the words, you discover the feelings and the sensations, but you will notice that very soon, like your voice becomes deeper. Mm. You're activating in your body language. You offer precisely this point of, of connection and, and safety. Mm. That's one thing. Another thing that is important is that you can define darkness in whatever way you want for yourself. You don't have to suddenly grow a big Viking beard <laughs> and develop an extra 20 kilos of muscles. <laughs> you can do that if you want. Very often, you know, that's a source of power that also works, you know, everything that you, you, you carry. But you can define uh, masculinity and darkness in, in your own terms. Like, for some, I'm very fluid with my masculinity. I'm not rigid. I'm like, I, I embody or bring in also aspects which are they would not be labeled traditionally as masculine, but I'd be like, I don't care. Mm. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's how I live it and that's how I do it. So I don't have to fit in a certain model. You know, for instance, if you look into the models of uh, David Deida, which is great teachings, right? It's like the man is stoic, yep. holding the space and He's that, and, and uh, the female is like going all over the place. And I go like, I want to go all over the place too. I want to be emotional. I want to be impulsive. I want to, to have aspects that, that might not be labeled as masculine within that model. But for me, that's the way I will define my masculinity. Or you can say, well, I have my masculine and my feminine aspects fully integrated as well. Beautiful. So happy we are doing this together. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Jaya. Jaya. <laughs> Jaya. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, man. <laughs> Patient this cameraman. Guy, this guy was like, Wow. Let that come up on your foot. <laughs> oh, yeah. He wants to join the session. You should look you at the, the You should look at the symbolism. Mm. Would you like to wrap it up? Like, uh, yeah, how how should we wrap, do you think? We said we were going to do 2 hours, so I want to be conscious of your time so it's midday now, so it's actually yeah. perfect. I think can like I, Can I send a message to the world? 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did you, well, wherever you want like um, yeah, we yeah. like our objective was to shoot you shoot the temple get some interview stuff do um do some like more practical stuff together so we're kind of set in terms of like the storyboard that we're going to put together so yeah, yeah like yeah. whatever you, if you want to just be solo no you let's set up and uh i want us to come closer together yeah. over here 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I want to really honor these guys, Matt behind the, the camera over here and David who has been going on an amazing journey creating all these podcasts. I don't know what you're doing right now, but uh, I will find out more very soon. And uh, what I want to say to, uh, to you who are watching these videos and um, hopefully being inspired by that is that uh, number one, you can reach out. Uh, my website is vitalcoaching.com and uh, I'm present on Instagram and Facebook as Vital Coaching or Shiva Rajaya. So feel free to reach out and send me some questions if you want or if you're in Bali, come to say hi. That's one thing. The second thing is that uh, if you want to remember something about the field of Tantra, when somebody comes to you and says, yeah, Tantra, no, no, I try Tantra and it's weird and something, you say, remember this very simple definition that I use for myself, which is really, really powerful. It is a complete path of life mastery or a path of awakening. So anything that has to do with you becoming a more powerful human being and more embodied and more grounded and more integrated, and you need a path, you need a path of transformation, a mystical path of transformation, the, the field of Tantra, that's what it gives you. And also the field of Tantra is a complete path of awakening. If you go like, I want to wake up, I want to know what's behind there, I want to eat this red pill <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and see what's be behind the veils of the matrix, the path of Tantra is also something that gives you that. And if you don't know where to start, you can reach out uh, to me. What I would encourage you to do is navigate it with curiosity, start exploring, start taking steps forward. If you have a hint in your mind or something that you would like to check or something you would like to do, follow the hints. The mantras are only the first step. You, you activate the connection with the tantric field and then um, but then you have to follow up with action you have to take action action means that you have to start changing things in your life not just keep everything static the way it is if you get a hint and you go like well i have to change my diet i have to change my relationship to that person i have to heal that connection i have to take a trip go into the mountains for a while or something like that follow up with actions. The hints are only there to give you inspiration, but then you are the one who has to take action. And another important element is that you are a sovereign being, you are master of your life, you have the power to self-source your own uh, truth, and uh, I believe in you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically super excited to wherever you are at, and um, yeah, good luck and lots of beauty and inspiration your way. Jaya. Jaya! Let's do a Jaya to the skies. <laughs> if you are watching this video, just Jaya five times to the sky, you can do it with us. Jaya! 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 <laughs> That's a wrap. Nice. Jaya. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Jaya thank, thank you, man. You.